Okay, so tonight I'll be doing my persuasive speech on why you should adopt a pet from a shelter. So my visual aid for tonight will be my dog, Roxy. And that was my mom with her. She'll be my audience for tonight. So usually my dog is very cooperative, but tonight she didn't want to be at all. So... So as I said, my topic is adopting pets from shelters. So if you're like me, a sad animal commercial on TV where they show a pet chained to a tree or locked in a fence where they can't get out is enough to put you in a bad mood for the whole day. And the thought of a puppy or a kitten sitting outside shivering in the cold and the snow in the winter can almost make you cry. But what if I told you that these animals aren't out of the woods yet even when they make it to the shelter? Two of the three dogs that I've owned were living in um, shelters whenever I got them and even though they were at a shelter they still lived in subpar conditions due to overcrowding and lack of funding for the shelter. And I found two of the best friends that I could ever ask for in a place where so many people never think to look. So the perfect pet for you could be in an overcrowded animal shelter right now waiting for their forever home. Today I'd like to talk to you about the need for people to adopt from animal shelters how to adopt a shelter pet, and the unbreakable bond that your family can foster with your new shelter pet. So first we'll talk about the need for animals to be adopted from shelters. Kind-hearted people all over the U.S. see commercials from the ASPCA, which is the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, and they donate money to help these animals find a better life. But the problem with this is... Um, Along with lack of funding, shelters and rescues across America are running out of room to house stray and abandoned animals. So according to statistics from the ASPCA, 7.1 million companion animals, which means dogs or cats, are relinquished to shelters each year. And of these 7.1 million animals, 1.2 million dogs and 1.4 million cats have to be humanely euthanized each year. But it is important to note that not all of these animals are euthanized due to overcrowding. Some may be terminally ill or injured really badly or extremely aggressive. But about 542,000 dogs and 100,000 cats are reunited with their owners each year. So maybe they've been victims of a storm and it destroyed their home and the pet ran away while their family was trying to take cover or maybe a fence got left open and they just ran away but they are eventually reunited with their family. 35% um, of shelter dogs and 37% of shelter cats are eventually adopted and 29% of all domestic animals um, adopted in the U.S. are purchased straight from breeders so these animals never go to a shelter at least not initially before they find a family, but they may end up at a shelter later on in life. So, one of the biggest contributors to animal overpopulation is a lack of spaying and neutering. So, 70,000 domestic animals are born in the U.S. each day, and over half of those are accidents. So, that means that it's really likely that they'll end up in a shelter. And what a lot of people don't know is that female kittens can get pregnant at four months old and female puppies can get pregnant at six months old. So that's a lot sooner than a lot of people think and they don't know to take precautions that early in life for their, their young pet. And maybe their pet gets pregnant before they even thought it was possible. So it's important to have male and female kittens and puppies spayed or neutered as close to four or six months respectively as possible to prevent accidental pregnancies and many p people even if they do know how early their pet can get pregnant they don't have them spayed as soon as possible because they think that maybe it's really costly or extremely expensive and they can't afford doing that but in reality if their pet has babies it costs more to take care of these babies that their pet might have for one year than it would to have their own pet spayed or neutered. So now that you understand the need for people willing to adopt shelter animals, I can tell you how. And this is how to adopt a pet from a shelter near you. Um, first you need to speak with your family or your friends or your roommates or anybody that you would trust to take care of your pet if something were to happen to you and make sure they agree with your, your desire to adopt a shelter pet because in the case that something bad were to happen to you hopefully this person would be willing to take over and take care of your pet for you because um, 
if you don't make arrangements for somebody to take care of your pet if something bad were to happen to you then they might be frightened without you and a familiar face would be more beneficial for them because if not they might be sent back to the shelter or left wandering the streets and um, if that happened they might become disoriented or become aggressive since they don't know what's going on and that probably wouldn't end very well for them either so once you decide that you can adopt a new pet and you've cleared it with your friends or your family or whoever their backup caregiver may be you can go browse the shelters or rescues in your area and if you live in a large metropolitan area you might want to utilize a website like pet finder or adopt a pet or best friends animal society and these are just a few that i found online but with websites like this it's really easy to put in like what kind of pet you want what um what gender what age if they're good with elderly people or little kids and basically narrow it down to what what pet would fit best with your family before you even go to meet them or consider adopting them to see if it would even be worth your time to go check it out so after you've located a pet that you would like to adopt you need to make sure that you're prepared to pay for any fees that might be associated with adopting a shelter pet and this usually includes a small fee to adopt a pet in addition to fees for shots and for really young animals sometimes the fee for spaying or neutering the animal at a nearby veterinary clinic is already included in the cost that you pay at the shelter so sometime in the next couple of weeks you just drop by the clinic and have that procedure done and you don't have to pay for it at that time because it's already taken care of and um, you might need to be prepared to pay with cash because most animal shelters are small nonprofit organizations and a lot of them may operate on a cash only basis to spare unnecessary costs associated with credit card machines and the fees that those charge and the cost for operation and maintenance of that so after you have all these things taken care of you need to be prepared to bring your new pet home so before you bring them home with you, you need to make sure that you have all the things that he or she may need and that might include leashes or collars for walking outside if you don't have an enclosed space for them to go outside without you and take care of their business or whatever. And um, you'll need to have food, dishes for food and water, litter boxes if it's cat or cat litter, um, a place for them to sleep, toys, anything that they might need when they're coming to a new home. So bringing them home is the easy part and now we'll explore how adopting a pet can be beneficial for you as an owner as well as for the pet. So it benefits your whole family and while you may think that your family adopting a pet won't make a difference in the big picture because a lot of people don't think it will, it definitely will. Um, according to statistical data there are 125.82 million households in the United States and this means that if one out of every household one out of every household chose to adopt one shelter animal that there would be no more homeless pets in the United States. So pets provide companionship that can rival the closeness of a human relationship for some people and this definitely includes children and the elderly who might foster a really close relationship with their pet. And for elderly people who are still able to get up and do things on their own but they, maybe they live at home alone, maybe their spouse has passed away or they live far away from their children, um, pets can be great exercise companions because they need to get up and walk around a few times a day and they usually aren't really in that big a hurry to walk around so they're great companions for elderly people who need to get out a few times a day as well. But the greatest problem is people who adopt animals and don't care for them properly and that can cause accidental pregnancy as we discussed before. And then there are more unwanted animals born and shelter populations are at an all-time high. So as anyone who has ever owned an animal knows, adopting a pet can be one of the most rewarding and beneficial things that you'll ever do. Tonight I've discussed the need for people to adopt from animal shelters, how to adopt a shelter pet, and the unbreakable bond that your family can foster with your new pet. You can adopt a pet after discussing it with your family or friends by visiting a nearby animal shelter or rescue and what if you knew that an animal sitting in a shelter right now would someday be your furry best friend think of the love and companionship that a pet could bring to your family so in conclusion i'll leave you with a short anonymous quote that sums up my message perfectly and that saving one dog will not change the world but surely for that dog the world will change forever thank you